Hi there. Today I want to share with you the top supplements that I use every single day to stay strong and healthy, even though I hate supplements. Well, hate is maybe a strong word, but I really don't like using supplements. So I want to share these with you in hopes that you also can feel happy and healthy. I'm Jen, I'm a holistic nurse, and I'm here to help you heal yourself, expand your consciousness, and become more of who you really are. Do I think supplements can help you become more of who you really are? Actually, I do. Uh, And these supplements that I wanna teach you about can help you on every level, body, mind, spirit, emotions, all of it. And First, I want to share with you why I don't like supplements. I have been on a mighty healing journey, uh, including the last four years after I was injured by mold and antibiotics. Uh, My daughter was really, really sick. Her immune system was in complete disharmony. I'll say that much. But we probably spent, God, the word, the number 10,000 comes in my mind. Did we spend $10,000 on supplements? I don't know. But number one reason that I don't like supplements is they're really expensive. And I think that we can receive a lot of what we need through our food. And that's my preference. Instead of buying supplements and thinking that this supplement is going to fix me and this supplement is going to fix me to really focus on food as medicine. Now, that being said, I do take some supplements because it can be kind of difficult to get what we need from food these days. Another reason that I don't like supplements is a lot of supplements are, the word greenwashed comes to mind. There are all these supplement companies that make it look really natural and really healthy and really beautiful. But in fact, a lot of supplements have a lot of fillers, flow agents, they call it, so that the so that the supplements and what's inside them can flow through the machines well. Now, these fillers and flow agents might not be a big deal for a lot of people, but when you're really sensitive like I was and like my daughter was, you need to know exactly what all those things are and to stay away from most most of these additives in supplements. So I would invite you to look at the supplements you have and read all the ingredients and see what's really there. I mean, something as basic as rice bran for someone with a rice allergy or a sensitivity to rice could be a really big deal and completely eliminate all the benefits of that supplement. So those are two of the main reasons. They're expensive and they a lot of them contain a lot of weird things in them. But there are some supplements that I take every day and I want to share them with you because I think you might like to take them too because they have really helped me. Number one, minerals, particularly mineral salt, which you think, oh, that's not really a supplement, but um, mineral salt is any salt that's from the earth that has color, that's rich in minerals. A lot of people think of like Himalayan salt or sea salt or um, Celtic salt or There are salts that are like the color of the rainbow. There are yellow salts. There are black salts. And the unique properties of all these salts come from the balance of all the minerals that are in them. So when you eat like an actual mineral salt from the earth, you're getting, some people say, like Himalayan salt has 80 trace minerals in it. Now, what are these trace minerals? They are the building blocks of our bodies. They are catalysts for hundreds, thousands of reactions that are happening inside of us. So when we're not receiving these minerals, um, we're not able to, our body isn't able to do all the things that it needs to do for us. So I have a few different kinds of salt at home. Um, Mineral, minerals are kind of a big deal. So Himalayan salt is a really nice basic one that you can get at most grocery stores. And I also have trace mineral drops that have some of the most foundational minerals that we need that a lot of people don't receive. Why are people not receiving the minerals from their food? Well, some people just don't eat a healthy enough diet that they're receiving all the minerals from the the fruits and the vegetables and the meat. 
So a lot of people out there are eating a lot of processed foods and grains, which sometimes will have minerals re-added, but aren't super rich in minerals in general. So having trace minerals is really helpful. I get a big jug of water every morning. I put some lemon in it and I put trace mineral drops and I put a little bit of mineral salt. And that's kind of my like Gatorade style drink for the whole day. It really nourishes the adrenals. It creates the, well, it, it has the minerals for all those uh, reactions that the body needs and the building blocks of the body itself. So that is number one. Along with that category of minerals, I also really like this supplement ion. Uh, Dr. Zach Bush created it, who is a real pioneer in the, the world of healing the microbiome. And the only thing in ion, I probably should know the name of this mineral, but it's a mineral that's like ancient mineral from deep in the earth. And it supposedly helps the redox system, which I think of as like the motherboard of the gut, communicate with each other. So if the microbiome is in disharmony, there's likely an element of the, like the different bacteria, the different viruses, the different protozoa, the different fungi, they aren't communicating well. And according to Dr. Zach Bush, ion, this mineral, helps to strengthen that communication network between the microbial community. So number one is minerals. Number two is a particular kind of mineral, but it, it's in a category all of its own as far as I'm concerned. And this is magnesium. Magnesium is vitally important and a lot of natural health practitioners and a lot of people believe that we are all deficient in magnesium these days for a few reasons. Um, number one, it's depleted in the soil. Glyphosate, for example, binds magnesium and other minerals, so it's not even available to go into the vegetables and the fruits and the meat. So the magnesium is also involved in a lot of people say 400 processes in the body, but other people say 1,000, 1,200 processes in the body require magnesium, including, I believe, six out of eight of the steps in the um, ATP creation cycle, the, the process that the mitochondria, which you might remember from biology, is the powerhouse of the cell. Six out of eight steps in that powerhouse energy creation process require magnesium. If you're not getting enough magnesium, you likely aren't going to have the energy that you need. The magnesium is also really important for the detoxification process in the liver, for the detoxification process in every cell in the body. That was a mosquito. <laughs> and if you don't have enough magnesium, you're not going to be detoxing properly. There are a myriad of reasons to have magnesium, including blood sugar regulation, including, including um, blood flow in the body, including, let's see, allergies and histamine response. This was a big one for my daughter who had what they call mast cell activation and her immune cells were constantly shooting out histamine all the time. Um, I've heard it said that even someone without a histamine issue like that or without allergies who gets depleted in magnesium starts creating more allergic responses. So take your magnesium. <laughs> I recommend magnesium glycinate. There are many different kinds of magnesium, but this one is really well absorbed. It's easy on the body and it, hmm, it also helps heal the gut. So magnesium glycinate, I take it in capsules and I recommend taking it with meals. You also can get drops of magnesium and trace minerals, which I also like. The, the recommended dose for magnesium is five milligrams per pound. So if you take how many pounds you are and multiply that by five, that's the number of milligrams of magnesium that you're gonna wanna take in a day to refill those stores of magnesium.
Number three supplement that I take every day is probiotics. Probiotics are the good bacteria. If you think about our microbiome as being the whole community of bacteria, yeast, viruses, protozoa, all these little teeny creatures that are in our bodies, um, that is the microbiome. And a lot of people these days, as a result of being disconnected from the earth, as a result of antibiotic use, as a result of pesticides and other chemicals, as a result of even some would say detergents in our uh, dishwasher soap, can really shift that microbial community, that makeup of the microbiome. And what we really want is for a majority of our microbiome to be the good guys and not so many of the microbiome creatures to be what we might call the bad guys. Now, ultimately, there is no good and bad, but we do want to balance between the ones that are helping us and the ones that might be more parasitic. Probiotics, there are a million kinds out there, and the kinds that I like, there's one kind in particular I really like <clears throat> called Megasporebiotic. It's a spore form of a probiotic, which means it's a bacteria that's in its dormant state. And once it goes into your body and touches your stomach acid and touches your digestion, it, it wakes up and it starts multiplying and doing its work. Now, these kinds of soil-based organisms, these spores, our ancestors were eating them all the time when they were eating food directly from the earth. But unfortunately, these days, that's not the case for most people. And the cool thing about these um, soil-based organisms is they're kind of like the bouncers. They're like the, <clears throat> the, the good guys that are kicking out the bad guys. So sometimes when people start taking this probiotic, they'll have a little bit of diarrhea or they'll have some kind of, kind of reaction happening that some might consider to be die-off. Megasporebiotic is what I would recommend and has been recommended to me by multiple functional medicine practitioners as the first step. Uh, they recommend this to get the, the balance happening. And a, a couple other cool things that the megasporbiotic does is they actually create vitamins. They create vitamins that we need so that we're not needing to rely on getting our vitamins so much from our food, which of course we want to do. But our microbiome can actually create vitamins for us. There are two other... There are two other... Um, probiotics that I really like. One is, uh, it's called smidge sensitive. It's a probiotic for very sensitive people, people that have a known inflammation situation or histamine intolerance, and it's only histamine degrading bacteria. So these are bacteria that, uh, only eat and get rid of histamine. They don't create their own and if this is an issue for you, really do your research when it comes to any regular probiotic because there are certain strains of bacteria that create histamine, which isn't a problem for most people, but it is a problem for people who are uh, kind of having an immune system going haywire situation, which was the case for my daughter and me. There are a couple other probiotics that I recommend, which I will link below on my uh, full script dispensary protocol that I'll share with you. And these ones are nice also because they are these lactobacillus and these bifidobacteria, which are really common and helpful bacteria for us. But the reason that I like the one that I recommend below is because you don't have to keep it refrigerated and it's also in that, um, that spore form. The fourth supplement that I really like and I take every day is grass-fed beef liver. This is another one of those supplements like salt that you might think, well, that's not an actual supplement. Um, actually, I probably agree with you. It's a food. Beef liver or bison liver or animal liver has been a revered food all throughout our ancestral history. 
And when scientists looked at this revered food and broke it down, they found that liver is like nature's multivitamin, that it has more vitamins and minerals for the amount than for the amount of food that is there than any other food on planet earth. Now I eat liver. <laughs> I'll probably talk about liver in another video, but I don't love eating liver. It's not something that I'm like, wake up in the morning and I'm so excited to eat liver. Although when I did start eating liver, I really couldn't get enough of it. It was like the stores in my body really needed it and really wanted it. And I was eating a lot of it. And then I hit a point where I wasn't really craving it anymore. And it was kind of like, uh, I don't really want the liver so much, but I know that I want it because my body feels so good when I'm eating it. It's like a superpower. It's like uh, a, a source of energy that feels really real, unlike caffeine or other stimulating substances. So I like to take it as a supplement. Um, it the, the kinds that I have on my, my protocol list that I'll share with you are from grass-fed liver, grass-fed beef, and it's also freeze dried so it's like really quickly dried so that all the nutrients are locked into it and depending on the company that you buy it from it takes either four or six capsules to equal an ounce of liver in a day which some people say is super healthy dr natasha campbell mcbride the founder of the gaps nutritional protocol she says when people are in a healing process, they can eat as much of a, as a palm or even hand size of liver every day. So one ounce is really not that much. And I prefer to take the capsules with meals. It's just like adding a little bit of liver into my meal. And otherwise you can even take it by itself because it is a food. So it's not like it'll hurt your stomach. Whereas magnesium, I also really like to take with food because if it's taken on an empty stomach, it can have some effects, which are good effects. For example, that increase in blood flow can cause some flushing. And that's great, although I don't particularly like the feeling of magnesium hitting my system really fast. So I like to take it with food. So the food kind of buffers that um, like uptake of the magnesium. The fifth supplement that I want to share about is dandelion root. Dandelion root is an herb which has been known forever to be really, really supportive for the liver, for detoxification, and it's really nutritious also. Dandelions have this really long tap root which goes down into the earth and pulls minerals into it. Some people will take it as a tincture. Um, which means it's been put into either alcohol or glycerin and then the medicine of it is sucked out into the liquid or people will dry and cut up the root or roast it. I really love roasted dandelion root because it tastes really good. <laughs> Some people think that it tastes a lot like coffee. If you're a coffee connoisseur, you might not actually agree with that, but it is really dark like coffee and some people use it as a coffee replacement. I prefer it as that roasted dandelion root and I put a little bit of honey in it and it's so good. It does a few things for the body. It, it helps the liver, it helps with detoxification in the liver, it helps like push the toxins out of the liver, it helps the blood flow through the liver. In Chinese medicine, they talk about the liver needing to have a good flow and a liver that is overburdened or, yeah, mostly overburdened or stuck can get hot, like a hot liver. There are particular symptoms for that, like red eyes and irritability and um, maybe even like headaches. So dandelion root can help get that flow in the liver happening so that the energy can move properly in the body. So if I'm ever having like tension in my shoulders, I think of magnesium and I also think of dandelion root. So even though I might not need dandelion root every day, I love the taste of it. And it's just become one of those delicious habits that I know is also remineralizing my body, helping my liver stay uh, well and keeps me happy. <laughs> The 
The last supplement that I really want to talk about today that I take every day is iodine. And the more research that I did about iodine, the more I realized how incredibly important it is for every cell in the body. It, again, it's one of these like fundamental um, minerals. Now, iodine is so important that the federal government at one point even put it in the salt because they wanted to make sure that everyone had it. It's really important for the thyroid. It's really important for detoxification in the body. It helps with um, that balance of microbes in the body. It's very antimicrobial. And it's also very misunderstood. People can be really afraid of iodine. And once I did all this research and I could do a whole nother video about iodine, I realized I don't need to be afraid of iodine. In fact, I need iodine. I heard it said that the soils, especially the soils far away from the ocean where there's naturally a lot more iodine are very depleted. So I live in the Midwest of the US and the even they say, like grass-fed animals, their meat will have a lot of iodine in it. But if they're grazing on grass grown in soil that doesn't have a lot of iodine in it, then that's not going to have a lot of iodine in it. Of course, you can get iodine from eating seafood and from eating um, seaweed and kelp and different seaweeds like that. But I have a little bottle of iodine that I put in my water every day. So my mineral water that has my lemon, the salt, the trace minerals. I also put a few drops of iodine. I started with a half a milligram. And I believe the iodine that I have on my supplement list, one drop is 250 micrograms, which means four of those would be one milligram. Now I'm taking three drops per day or three milligrams a day of the kind that I take. I would recommend starting small, especially if you have autoimmune issues or skin issues or your organs of elimination aren't working well or you're having trouble detoxing. Iodine could push detox more than your body could handle. Now, that being said, there's no way to know unless you try whether it feels helpful initially or whether it feels like a burden initially. But either way, you need iodine. We all need iodine. And this is one of the supplements that I take every single day because I know how helpful it is. I noticed when I started taking it that I had more energy. So some people recommend taking it more in the morning than in the evening because it actually can create a lot of energy in the body because the body's functioning properly. These six supplements that I take every single day feel foundational to me. The minerals, the salts, the magnesium, the probiotics, the grass-fed beef liver, which is like my multivitamin, dandelion root, which keeps everything moving and makes me happy, <laughs> and iodine. I really think of these as the most foundational supplements that, that I could take. And then anything above and beyond that, I'm very careful about. I want to make sure that it's clean. I want to make sure that I actually need it. I want to make sure that I can't be getting it in any other way from my food, because that's the way that I really like to nourish myself. Since I'm a nurse, I'm able to use a really cool online dispensary called Fullscript to share recommendations with people. You can click the link below and get access to the protocol that I just told you about right now, which is my top favorite daily supplements that I use. And you also will get 15% off of either any of these supplements that you buy or anything. I really like this company because they, they have only the, the highest quality supplements available. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you've used any of these supplements in your life and they've been helpful for you, please put them in the comments below. And thank you for watching this video. If you want more, click the, the little bell and the subscribe to sign up for my channel. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you next time.